show, by the way, so I'm hoping that will happen as well. Um, I, I know that he told me some things that, um, what can I say? He substantiated the, uh, the jump room to Mars. We have a video on our site called Jump Room to Mars. It's an interview, sort of a, a conversation more than an interview with David Wilcock, who, by the way, is going to be on on Thursday. And um, Bill and I talking about Henry Deacon and, and David Wilcock's uh, secret witness called Daniel and the information that they both were uh, were giving us. And uh, so at, at any rate, he was talking about things like superluminal travel. Um, he, he did uh, substantiate that we have bases on the moon and Mars, and he said other planets as well. He, he substantiated the fact that we've gone... Um, we've got we travel outside this solar system. Uh, I mean, you said he, he, he said um, to visit our friends was I believe <laughs> yes the lovely little very casually idiom. very casually. <laughs> <laughs> to and, visit and our he, friends. And it's very nice to hear from him, if I understand you right, that we do have friends. He said we have more friends than enemies, but not all the ETs out there are good guys. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. And that there is a space war going on. Um, and so that's, that's important information to have. And I have to say that we can reveal more of his background um, once we get some kind of substantiation in terms of... Uh, in, I mean, you know, his his agreement. Uh, I've already, in basically, got substantiation in terms of he is who he says he is. Um, very, very complex individual. Uh, he has been a spy. He admitted to that. Um, trained as a spy, um, and he also says that he has uh, clearance several several um, levels above the president. So how's that? <laughs> Very interesting. Um, so, yeah, this is the kind of thing that Camelot was really established for, is, is witnesses of this caliber. And um, so we're, we're excited to, to talk about that and to know about that um, and hopefully to get the word out uh, with, with people out there that may be skeptics, may not believe some of this, the testimony we get from, from Deacon or from, from Simpson. But, um, you know, most of what we get from our witnesses is actually true. Um, so uh, it, it's very complex. On the other hand, I also had a meeting with Dan Biersch, uh the other day. <laughs> All right, go on. Tell us about that. Uh, well, this was on uh, Sunday. I think he mentioned this was on Sunday. He happened to be in LA. Is that right? Well, I can't really say the day, but I can say that he, he that, that I did meet with him. Uh, we were meeting on the the possibility of getting his movie made, which is a, a movie based on um, uh, the. Um, sorry, I was just getting a an incoming phone call there that's kind of interesting um at any way we uh <laughs> we we were um talking about the the possibility of the dan burish story getting made in hollywood uh so that's that's really why we were meeting and uh we'll see what happens with that i'm not sure whether or not my particular people that i've gotten involved with here in hollywood will be able to uh to, to carry that out or whether another group are going to, to get the rights to the story and, and to making it. It's really up to Dan Burish and Marcia McDowell and um, which way they want to go with it. I guess this is, I mean, the skeptics out there will jump on something like that and say, well, you know, this is just like a sort of um, an ego massaging, get rich quick scheme from, from Dan, and he's a hoaxer right from the very beginning. He's actually taken a vow of poverty, and he isn't instrumental in this at all. It's just really that the, that the drive for getting a movie made out of his life um, has actually come from a whole bunch of other people, some of whom you're in the process of talking with, and I know that we can't name names, but it's just like... As I think we were talking about in an earlier show, was it ours or was it someone else's? I can't remember. It all gets mixed up together. We were talking about how Hollywood is used as quite 
an important platform for disclosure. And of course, many people who are following this field understand this, that there's information that has been leaked in TV shows, in, in, in films, in uh, modern myths like Star Wars and um, all the work that Spielberg did with E.T. and so on and so forth. But a lot of this is really part of a, a, um, a strategy to leak all this critical information into the popular culture and really bring up the young people with the absolute certainty that all of this is very real. And um, I guess any movie about somebody like Dan, and there's a whole bunch of other people we know who are almost as um, amazing candidates for movies, when you think about the storyline that you could make out of a true story. Um, with all the mystery and the intrigue and the enemy of the state type feel of it, you know, um, there's a, a huge amount of potential for both education and entertainment. And this is where you're coming from, isn't it? Well, absolutely. Um, in fact, this is what I started out doing long before we made Camelot. Was was I was an ind independent producer pitching projects in Hollywood and writing sci-fi screenplays. Uh, the whole idea behind this is is to get the truth out. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, that's the bottom line for Camelot. It's the bottom line basically for anything we do and um, certainly for, for making a movie about Dan Biersch's life because there are people that will not be listening to this radio show, unfortunately, and um, also never coming to our website and there's absolutely no way to reach them otherwise. And so the movie industry and, and major motion pictures and especially major sci-fi um, movies are just an amazing way to get the word out as to what's really going on and of course the Illuminati tapped into this quite a while ago and so they use it as their vehicle and uh, you know actually the recent um, movie that was put out um, about uh, what was it called mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, no about the Vatican um, has a tremendous oh, angels and demons no. Yeah, Tre tremendous amount of disinfo in it. Absolutely turns the truth on its head, um, and and as to who the the real heroes are. However, um, it it is worth seeing because what you can do when you see one of these things is to is to start dissect them in terms of what you you can learn by research and by listening because the truth is out there. There's no doubt about it. Um, and that's the way the Illuminati like to have it. Uh, they figure if you're too dumb to find it, then you're, you deserve all you get. That's really their philosophy, and it's something to keep in mind all the time. So uh, Let's see if we can do a bridge here, actually, because many of our listeners will remember that last year the Vatican came out with this incredible statement that, and I don't have any kind of a quote in front of me, but it's like, uh, it was something like, um, if extraterrestrial races exist, then we must bear in mind that they are our brothers and sisters under God, you know, or something like that. It was just an incredible statement, and it came out of nowhere. Do you remember it as something like that? It was something of that nature, wasn't it? Well, yeah, um, I, I think it's um, Balducci, uh, I think that's his name, um, uh, Monsignor Balducci, uh, I, I'm not. I forget his name. Anyway, it's uh, it's someone who works for for the Vatican on a high level. And Paula has interviewed him, and uh, and I actually met him. Um, I have to say that that Leo Zagami back in the day when he was on our website, uh, when we actually interviewed him, and he was in his um, for a temporary time on in his right mind I'd say um, actually being a real whistleblower did say that that basically he's a demon uh, hunter that that's his real job in the Vatican um, but he was was assigned to come out and you know talk sort of in a very superficial way about how the Vatican accepts the notion that ETs exist. Well, they might as well because they've been doing deals with the ETs for God knows how long, and and it's and there's very um, good evidence that uh, some of their deals are with the reptilians that have a base uh, beneath the Vatican, and I'm sure this, if we have any religious fanatics listening to this, that they're probably going off the top now. Actually, I wanted to change the subject just briefly here to tell you that when I talked to Dan Burish the other day, very recently, he did say that according to the timeline that, that he knows about, the dollar is never going to crash. Believe that or not. I mean, this is amazing because every other witness we have 
um, is is saying that you know the crash of the dollar is coming and it's coming in something around November. In fact, a re the recent uh, contact I made said it was coming on November 27th, and that the uh, so-called uh, economic hitmen, um, really the Illuminati, are going to be crashing it on purpose on November 27th, and that what will follow will be a chipping of the population. 